Hey everybody. Today, I'm going to take you back in time to 1982 and tell you why I feel like the 1982 Topps football set is one of the most memorable sets in the history of Topps. We'll look at what was going on in football at that time and how this set got us through it. Don't go away. So you may ask, well, what's so special about 1982 Topps football? Well, for me, it's got a lot to do with nostalgia. You see, I turned 12 years old in 1982. So this set came out at a very impressionable time in my life. I was a few years into my obsession with pro football. And this set was really the first set I was able to actively pursue completing. And I was just a few months removed from, to this day, my biggest heartbreak in football. When Dwight Clark's The Catch and Ray Wershing's converted extra point eliminated my Dallas Cowboys in the NFC Championship game, I was devastated. To this day, I cannot stand the 49ers. But another reason why I like this set so much is because this set was the first set in over a decade that Topps was able to use the team logos on the cards. Through the entire decade of the 1970s, Topps didn't have licensing that would allow them to print the team logos on their cards. The result was 12 straight years of helmetless players or helmets with the logos airbrushed out. But having acquired said licensing for the 1982 season, Tops rose to the occasion in a big way by including a beautiful team logoed helmet on each and every player's base card. Now as a 12 year old kid accustomed to seeing airbrushed dull looking helmets on cards for the entirety of my football card collecting life, these 1982 cards were simply over the top. The card backs are printed in a stunning combination of yellow and blue. And not only were the cards beautiful, but as usual, those wrappers were incredible. A beautiful bright yellow script backed by the perfect shade of blue indicates the product awaiting inside. While above, there appears to be, for all intents and purposes, a Buffalo Bills player on the verge of catching an airborne football. And all of this is backed by the most captivating shade of bright red. Now as a side note, I find it a little amusing that 
judging by the angle of their head and their eyes appearing to be cast skyward, that the player on the wrapper appears to be waiting to catch a punted football, while the single bar on their helmet indicates that the player would most likely be a punter from that era. Also, the 1982 Topps football set was their first set to include an insert issue in over a decade. Tops had last included inserts in their football packs back in 1971 when they inserted both a 53 card game insert set and a set of 32 different mini posters into their packs. In 1982 to promote their soon to be released sticker issue, Tops included one of 16 different stickers in each and every pack of 1982 Tops football. These foil stickers on the front are identical to the stickers that would be released in the regular set. The difference between the two is on the backs where the insert stickers have the words coming soon and the regular issues have need stickers. And although the set only numbered 16, it included stickers of two of that year's prominent rookies, Anthony Munoz and Lawrence Taylor. And Topps used this small insert set to get in one more 1981 NFC Championship game throat punch to the still grieving Cowboys fan. The 1982 Topps football set would include the last regular issue cards of four Hall of Famers. Elvin Bethea, Art Shell, Jack Ham, and Ron Yary. There were 93 rookie cards in 1982 Topps football. Most notably are the rookie cardboards of Anthony Munoz, Lawrence Taylor, and Ronnie Lott. Other notable rookie cards in this set include those of Chris Collinsworth, Freeman McNeil, Matt Millen, James Brooks, and Everson Walls. In 1982 Tops also contained the rookie card of Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Mark Malone who, for the life of me, looked just like Tom Selleck. I can remember the first time I saw this card. Magnum P.I. plays football too? resemblance can probably best be seen on Mark's 1985 Tops card. But probably most memorable for me. The 1982 top set contained the rookie card of a young Kansas City Chiefs running back by the name of Joe Delaney. 
selected in the second round of the 1981 NFL Draft. Joe would go on to be awarded the UPI Rookie of the Year Award for the AFC and play in the Pro Bowl. Now, if you've never heard the story Joe Delaney, it's worth looking up. But here's a brief synopsis. On June 29, 1983, 24-year-old Joe Delaney lost his life while trying to save three young boys who were drowning. When it became apparent that the boys were in trouble, despite not being able to swim himself, Joe ran and jumped into the water to help. He never resurfaced after going under. One of the boys managed to make it back to shore unharmed. Another was rushed to the hospital where he would die. The bodies of the remaining child and Joe Delaney were later recovered by authorities. Delaney was laid to rest on July 4, 1983. And on July 15, was posthumously awarded the Presidential Citizens Medal by President Ronald Reagan. The Kansas City Chiefs would honor their fallen teammate during the 1983 season. That season, they would wear a special patch just above their hearts on their uniforms. Evidence of can be seen on some of the 1984 Tops Chiefs cards that used photos taken during the 1983 season. Now at the time of Joe's death, Tops was already in the middle of production of their 1983 set. Therefore, the 1983 set contains two cards of Delaney, neither of which mention his death. Beginning in 1973, Tops had annually produced a 528 card football set. But 1982 would be the last year they would do that for some time. Beginning in 1983, Tops would reduce the total card count of their sets to 396. This allowed them to print a complete set on just three 132 card sheets. A 396 card set would become the standard for seven years until 1990 when the card count went back to 528. And lastly, this card set carried me through something I had never been through before. A player's strike. After playing only two games of the 1982 season, the NFL Players Association went on strike. For eight straight weeks in the middle of the season, there was no NFL football. All I had to satisfy my craving for the NFL was the most recent issued set of Topps trading cards. After the players returned, the remaining schedule was played. And yes, my Cowboys managed to make it to the NFC Championship game again, where they would again lose, this time to Washington. San Francisco 49ers, they didn't even make the playoffs. The 1982 NFC Championship game would mark the 10th time the Dallas Cowboys had played in the game in the game's 13-year history. 
and it would be the last time they would appear in one for 10 years, effectively bringing to a close an NFL dynasty. I hope you have enjoyed this look at what I consider to be one of Topps' most memorable sets, 1982 Topps football. The set that keeps me a kid. So what about you? Do you have a set that automatically transports you back to your childhood? Tell me about it. I'd like to hear. My name's Brandon. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll leave you with this.